<sighs> December 31st. Hmm. Wow. Another year, guys. Another year on YouTube since 2012. Hell, probably before that, but I think 2012. Going on seven years. YouTube, Dallas Cowboy gossip. Running my mouth, running my fat mouth about Cowboys football. Phew. A lot's happened in seven years. Hell, a lot's happened this year alone. Wow. I, it's unbelievable. The years go by so fast. The older you get, the, the faster it goes by. Years used to last forever. When I was in my teen, growing up into my teen, late teens, early 20s, years lasted forever. You know, you thought you knew everything. Nobody could tell you nothing. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, man. I know, I know. And you, when in my 20s, I knew everything. I didn't listen to nobody. Nobody could tell me anything. You couldn't even give me positive advice. Because I, especially my early 20s, I thought I knew it all. But wait till you get them 30s. You, you're going to be listening like, damn, for real? Damn, for real? For real, dog? Shit, I ain't know that. Shoot, I, you're going to be wanting advice. You're going to be wanting people to tell you stuff you didn't know. You never learn everything. You're never perfect. You're going to die imperfect. Um, you, you learn so much. You, you take in so much knowledge when you get into your 30s, going into your 40s, you know, and then some. Uh, wow. Almost 40, man, and... um. Still ain't got the world figured out. Never will. Don't want to. <laughs> but it's almost 2019, guys. Um, man, how the years go by. How the, how the year went by. Uh, for, you know, it takes forever for football season to, to come around anyway. We, we wait so long. I mean, this is the, the, the shortest sport in, in, in that exists. Uh, man, let me put my shades on, man, I guess. Hell, sun is out. I forgot. Excuse me, guys. Let me put my Stone Cold Steve Austin shades on. All right, now. And that's the bottom line. No, but anyway, uh, football season is so fast, man. Uh, it takes forever for it to come around, and we finally get it, and we're happy, and it's gone. When you look up, your blanket's gone. It's already the playoffs, man. Already the playoffs. No more Sunday night football. Well, I mean, not Sunday night. No more Monday night football. No more Thursday night football. You know, it's just, it's about to get real serious. Business is about to pick up, like I always say. <sighs> guys, if you plan on going out tonight, man, just make sure you be safe. I know you guys want to get your drink on. All your youngsters want to get out there and go to the club and buy outfits. And girls want to get their nails done and feet done and hair did. Not hair done, hair did. So they can go out and be seen and turn, turn down guys and ask for their number and all that shit. You know, I'm glad I'm so past all that mess. I'm married, happily married. And I'm just so happy I ain't got to go out and be seen and hit the streets and go here and go there just so people can see me. I don't give a damn about... I've I done all that. I got all that out of my system in my late teens, early 20s. I got all the clubbing and partying and all that stuff going out to... I don't drink or smoke, so ain't no use to me going out to bars and all that crap. I thank God I don't have any bad habits. The only habit I got is feeling the power of the Dallas Cowboys. My wife shake her head at me sometimes when I be doing my videos and, you know, she hear me talking loud and cussing about the Cowboys. I said, okay, baby, would you rather me be in here or in the streets? She don't say nothing then. <laughs> but anyway, guys, y'all be safe, man, out there. There's some crazy people out there. People out there shooting guns and Uzis, throwing grenades in the air and all that stuff, planting landmines and shit for the new year. Guys, those bullets got to come back down. People say, man, what you doing for the new year, 1980? Hell, nothing at home. Because I got lucky all this time. God has blessed me to make it through this year. And I'd be damned if I go out and something happened to me on December 31st. You can't tell people that, though. They, they got to go out. They got to do something. They just can't stay their asses at home no more. But anyway, guys, 
I'm not happy about the Cowboys making it to the playoffs. No, no. I'm happy, but I'm not that happy. I'm not happy the way Dak played yesterday and the way the Dallas Cowboys played yesterday by beating the Giants yesterday. I'm not happy about that. No. What I am happy about, what I got this smile on my face because of the simple fact when we play the Seahawks, it's not going to be on Sunday. No, 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 not, not on Sunday. Not Sunday morning when it's too damn early at 10 o'clock. Not Sunday afternoon. Not Sunday at 9 o'clock uh, in, the, in the evening or at night. <sighs> Saturday, where the NFL belongs. I'm telling you, I'm going to take a plane trip to the NFL corporate office in New York and I'm going to boycott NFL games should be switched from Sunday to Saturday because of the simple fact of you get all that enjoyment of your team playing. Okay, say for example uh, say for example, the Super Bowl. You invite all your people over, family, friends, you know, y'all ordering wings and, and, and fish and barbecuing and all that stuff for the Super Bowl. Your team ain't even in it. But what if your team is in it? It's even better. You do, you're having all that fun. And the game don't come on to what, it, 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 all that pregame shit start at 12. And then uh, uh, they finally show the Super Bowl, the actual game come on at 7, 7.30. And what time it go off? Because the damn, it go off at 11, 12 o'clock because the damn halftime show is two hours. And guess what you got to do that next day? Just take a wild guess. Yeah, you got it. Got to go to work in the morning. After all that, and for some of you drink, some for some of you out there, they got to have a damn alcoholic beverage. Guess what you got to do in the morning? Got to go to work. This spoils everything. So we need to flip. Saturday is the perfect day for a game. And we play Saturday night. Ain't that beautiful? So after the game, I ain't got to be in a rush to go to bed. I ain't got to be in a rush to do nothing, to get prepared for the next day going to work. I get to enjoy the game. Isn't that beautiful? Wouldn't you guys love that? But that's too much like right. Too much. But anyway, guys, that was a good game yesterday, wasn't it? You know what? Those games are almost better than a blowout. I repeat, those games are all, almost better than a blowout. I think they are. Seriously. People say, oh man, we should have blown them out a bit better. No, 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 no. Because it gives me a chance to see who the real Cowboy fans are. Because there was so much shit talking about Dak Prescott and the Cowboys while the game was going. But right at the end, all you jabronis wanted to cheer for him. And that's what I'm talking about. Every silly candy ass jabroni want to talk mess about the Cowboys, talk mess about Garrett Prescott and all these people, and then they kissing their ass and they, yeah, baby, when Dak threw that ball in the corner, perfectly in the corner of the end zone to Cole Beasley. Touchdown. A natural reaction. You can't sugarcoat your reaction when you win like that. If you blow somebody out, you're already happy. It's too late. You're not going to get that natural reaction. That's why you don't tell nobody what you're going to do in the future. You just, boom, you hit them. So you can get the natural reaction. If they jealous, they ain't, they ain't got time to cover it up. <laughs> That's why I don't tell nobody what, me and my wife, we don't tell nobody what kind of plans we got. We don't tell nobody what we're doing because we want that natural reaction. Because if you run your mouth and you tell everybody what you're doing, what you got in store, and it don't work out, people are like, oh, what happened? Well, I thought y'all was doing this. <laughs> Let it speak for itself. But I love that game, man. I love it the way the Giants fan. I was looking at the Giants fans' eyes in the stadium, and they were just so happy. They thought they were really doing something. They thought they had the game in the bag. Yeah. Stupid mother.
and we just took that was that wasn't a win that was a takeaway if that was a column in win losses ties takeaway that would have been it that, that was a takeaway there's a difference between winning a game and taking a game away from somebody and I love that better than just winning it felt better so you can say ah you mother I almost I almost wish I was there so I can talk crap in their faces silly ass Giants fan Anyway, they they at home where they belong, and I bet they praying we lose. God bless them. I, I oh Lord. Well, guys, we got Seattle. Now I've been listening to all the fools today. Shannon Sharp. I couldn't wait to see what he had to say. You know, he's a cowboy hater. He's at the top of the list with Stephen A. Smith. They just haters, man. They don't know. They don't know how else to be. They just well, they were born haters. I don't know how you hate on somebody and you got a gold jacket and two Super Bowl rings, but you still find room in your closet to hate. But anyway, I was listening to them fools today and everybody wants to say about Dak Prescott, even people on my route, I talked to people today and they were, everybody's saying the same thing. I almost wanted to slap all of them. I'm like, they're, they're saying that, oh, Dak Prescott, uh, the Cowboys are a lot better when he throws on the run. They need to really let him go on the run. He don't do that on purpose. That's not by design. That pre There's no quarterback in NFL history who wants to run the ball first. I've said that a million times. Y'all stop saying that. Gary Prescott's better when he's on the run. You think he want to be on the run? It, when you on the run, that means somebody's chasing your ass. That means some 300-pound, 4640 lineman, full of muscle, is chasing your ass, and he wants to kill you. He want to hurt you. So that means you're running for your life. Dak Prescott create things with his legs because he has to, not by design. Unless you call him a quarterback sneak or, or you know, a QB waggle or something like that. But other than that, dog, it's, it's by choice. Michael Vick. Ran by choice. It wasn't by design. If you don't see nobody open, if your line is breaking down, what you gonna do, stand there? Of course he's gotta run outside the pocket and find somebody open. That's saying a lot of football, dog. Can't no coach teach that. I, I Everybody I talk to, that sweat going in my damn eye, everybody I talk to today, and the, 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 the professionals, uh, on ESPN and Fox Sports 1, all these guys on the radio, they got degrees and Super Bowl rings, the professionals that are never wrong. All of them said the same damn thing today. Uh, Dak Prescott's better when he's throwing on the run. They need to keep letting him throw on the run. Dude. <laughs> really? Is that what you think? Really? That's not how it goes. It don't work like that, man. These, these quarterbacks, these mobile quarterbacks, starting with Randall Cunningham back in the day, had to create space, had to make things happen for, uh, with their legs in order to convert down the field. Bottom line. That's it. Quit trying to make it seem like it's a play in the playbook that allows Dak Prescott to go outside, roll outside the pocket because there's not one quarterback. I guarantee you, if you saw Dak Prescott on the street, he's going to, and you ask him, would you rather be rolling out and running for your life and find somebody open, or would you rather comfortably find somebody open in the pocket? They're going to say, shit, I'd rather stay there in the pocket. That ain't my job. If I wanted to run the damn ball, I'd be a running back or a fullback. Boy, it's a good thing people don't get paid for thinking because, man, we'll be broke. Or they'll be broke. It's better. The offense is better when Dak Prescott is, is on the run. Of course, it turns into, it, it turns into saying like football. Somebody's going to be open when your quarterback is rolling out. It's just not by design, guys. It's by choice. But, that leaves the question. Dak Prescott has to run for his life because yesterday all the, the offensive linemen were on the field. So is Dak Prescott better when he has a broken offensive line or is he better with a dominant offensive line? That's the question. He might not be a pocket passer. He might be more accurate on the run. It seems like he is. 
statistics show that he is. He's better when he's running. I'm not going to say he's better when he's on the run. He's better when he's running for his life. Put it like that, in other words. So, that's the question. I'm going to say it again. I'm going I'm to ask the question again. In the comment section, is Dak Prescott better with a broken offensive line that let the, the defensive line get in there and, 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 and get him flustered and flush him out of the pocket? Or is he better comfortably in the pocket? Maybe we should have a broken line on purpose. Maybe we should sit along with Travis Frederick, sit Zach Martin, sit uh, uh, Tyron Smith. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Maybe we can get more pro productivity out of them. I don't know. That's to be determined. But he's been running for his life all season, so you know. But it is what it is, man. That that that's that's up for discussion right there. But um, you know, we got Seattle coming up, guys. Um, I had a Cowboy fan. There's a Seattle's gonna a Cowboy fan now. Cowboy fan. This is this is where the negativity shit start rolling in, start twinkling in. Cowboy fan going to say, <laughs> Russell Wilson's going <laughs> to, he's going to kick our ass today, guys. I said, see, man, what? He, he was turned, he had his back turned to me when he said it. I kind of turned up around. I said, I said, see, man, what, what why'd you, why would you say that? I said, is that what you want to happen? Well, no. I, I said, well, why would you say it? <laughs> what the fuck? Really? Why would you say that shit? You a cowboy fan, diehard cowboy fan, and you gonna sit up here and fix your mouth and say Russell Wilson is gonna kick our ass, is gonna light us up. Really? I bet you probably said the same shit on the New Orleans Saints uh, when we, uh, played us, when we whooped that ass. See, that's some fair weather fans. You know what I'm saying? Them fans are just, oh, we win it. Oh, okay. I'm a cowboy fan now. Yeah. I said, man, I almost slapped shit out that dude, man. I had to kind of bring him up to speed a little bit and kind of kill him with that knowledge. And he was like, well, oh, I, I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> Damn, you can't, don't do that, man. Don't do yourself like that, man. Shit. Damn. I mean, they tough, they're a tough team, but I, I feel our defense can, can contain them. We're a lot better team than we played them last time, so we already know what Wilson, uh, uh, Russell Wilson can do. I mean, okay, shit, I ain't gonna kiss his ass. He can get put on his ass just like anybody else. It's just think just like anybody else, dog. We're going to go. We're going to see how this work out. We're gonna, uh, well, Seattle going to come here and see how it irons out. And uh, they got to play in our house. So what I say, man, don't let nobody eat no eat their lunch on your counter. Pull up to your seat. But that's all I got, man. Um, I, uh... I have a little bit more on a, a of a breakdown on um, Seattle probably later on in the week. Uh, I don't feel like it right now. I'm really I'm I'm, I'm really amped about what happened yesterday. Uh, that was a good fight. That show fight so hard. What I am concerned about is the defense um, allowing 35 points from the New York Giants. That's what I'm concerned about. Uh, that's a big concern. Uh, defense needs to learn how to wrap up. Um, we, we catch people in the backfield, but we cannot wrap up. I don't, I don't get it. We gotta wrap these guys up, man. Uh, that's where fundamental comes in. At. We gotta go back to fundamentals going into the playoffs, man, because there, there's no room for error. There's no room for mistakes. And uh, if you go in doing all that shit, that, that'd be the first trip home. We're already going against the refs. You get what I'm saying? So you want to kind of leave all these these, these penalties and, 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 and errors in the back seat. The front seat is now in charge when you go to the playoffs. Nothing but positive vibes. Uh, you have to you have to have a different frame of mind. It's a different ball game. It's a different speed. Everybody's better. Everybody's quicker. Everybody's faster. Uh, stronger. You know. Uh, is man. I, I, <laughs> there's no getting around it. We just got to figure out a way to to uh, uh, win some ball games in the third quarter too. 
Uh, stop letting these teams linger. I said this last night on the round table. We got to stop letting teams linger all the way to the fourth quarter, man. We got to start blowing these, not blowing them out. I mean, we're not going to blow. Hopefully, we can blow somebody out, but uh, we got to start winning some ball games in the third quarter so we can, you know, shit, have a game won. I'm tired of winning by field goals, winning by touchdown, winning by one point. I'm tired of all that shit, man. That, that's, that's too hard on your nerves. I want to have good nerves going into this damn, you know, postseason or whatever. But that's all I got, guys, man. Um, good win yesterday. Uh, I, I, I'm leaving something out. I, shit, I hate when I leave something out. Um, yeah, good win yesterday. Um, Dak State. Dak showed a lot of heart, man. Uh, I, I'm very proud of him, man. Uh, he's an ugly winner. I take an ugly winner over an ugly loser any day of the week. I'm through complaining about that. Um, I'm ready for positive, positive energy. Nothing, nothing but positive energy going forward. Um, like I said earlier in, in the video, uh, quarterbacks scramble because they have to, not because they want to. It didn't, it didn't take no damn film session for me to say that either. <sighs> Make sure you stay prayed up, cowboy up, because you never know what the day is going to be. Holla back at your boy. I'm out. And the only thing else I got to say is...